Ah, good morning, grandchildren and my friends from afar. Going to take a look at the day, at chapter 34 in the great book of Jeremiah. What a crazy good book this has been. I enjoyed Isaiah, uh, but boy, I'm really enjoying uh, this one as well. Uh, get a little age on you. You can't really remember these stories from the last time you read them. So one of the good things about getting old and your memory getting dim is uh, you get to experience these stories over and over again, which I don't know if it's a good thing or not, but I really have been enjoying it. Let's go to the Lord and ask for some help. Dear Lord God, watch over us as we read through these scriptures, Father, and help us uh, help us receive that which you would have us receive, Father. We love you. We need you. Father, please forgive us for the times when we don't realize just how much we love and need you. We believe, Father. Amen. Well, that being said, <clears throat> 34 reads, The word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord when Nebuchadnezzar, a king of Babylon, and all his army, and all the kingdoms of the earth of his dominion, and all the people fought against Jerusalem. Notice here, this is all the people of the earth. This is a, this is no mistake, because you know if you think about the geographically these Middle Eastern uh, countries, though they were small, but God uses the the term, the, the uh, expression all, because this is really truly Babylon is a likeness for our own captivity. It's a likeness for our carnalness, our carnal-mindedness. And so it's a... And everybody goes against Jerusalem. That Jerusalem, a friend uh, was explaining to, uh, today in his uh, version of what that means is spiritual enlightenment. It is uh, our sense of Jerusalem. I've always said that this is us coming to the Lord. This is what Jerusalem represents, us reaching out. And I guess spiritual enlightenment is also a good way of looking at that. Uh, but uh, we're, at, uh, we're at war now with the world. And this is uh, carnal. And we have to keep in mind that we are both sides of this coin. We are the Jerusalem, the people that seek God. And we are also the carnal minded. That these two are always at constant war uh, with each other. Our carnal understanding versus our spiritual understanding. Or are we not? And against the cities thereof, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Go and speak to Zedekiah, king of Judea. And I should mention, we're going back in time here a little bit. These books are not always in chronological order, and they're taken out of this order for good reason, I'm sure. But uh, now we're back before the, the last chapter we were reading about the, the town already being taken that to Jerusalem being taken. Now this is all before again. And he's got to go give Zedekiah this warning. Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, go and speak to Zedekiah, king of Judah, and tell him, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will give this city unto the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. Uh, in the carnal, we think about a physical fire burning this uh, town down. Uh, and then in uh, the spiritual, we need to know that God is that consuming fire. And it is through our miserableness and our unhappiness uh, that we start looking to God. And we usually are erected again from the ashes by uh, us longing for God after a bad run of our own, uh, of our own doing. This is the nature of, of man. When we're fat and sassy, we don't think much about God. We think we're ten foot tall and bulletproof, do we not? And then when, when uh, fat and sassy starts having its way with us, and there ain't no crops planted, and when we start getting hungry and starving, uh, then we start thinking about planting. Amen? Kind of our nature, one of our traits of our nature. And thou shalt not escape out of the hand, but shalt surely be taken and delivered into his hand. And thine eyes shall behold the eyes of the king of Babylon, and thou shalt speak with the mouth to mouth, and thou shalt go to Babylon. I made a little note here today, the same. Our eyes shall meet with the king of Babylon's eyes, because these are one and the same eyes. 
Uh, these uh, spiritually, if you looked at this spiritually, uh, we are uh, the people that's being uh, punished for turning away from God. And we are also the people that has already done that as the king of Babylon. And we're going to meet up with this king face to face because we live with each other every day. You ever notice how sometimes you can study in the scriptures and the Bibles and you can feel all holy and all good and all sweet. And next thing you know, somebody cut out in front of your car and you're screaming like a wild banshee at the top of your lungs. Like you ain't got a drop of God in you. This is how we are. And we're at war with this Babylonian state, uh, this uh, state of carnal mindedness. And uh, the war rages on. Amen. Yet hear the word of the Lord, O Zedekiah, king of Judah. Thus saith the Lord of uh, thee, Thou shalt not die by the sword. Why? We're reading the sword right now. The sword gives you life. But thou shalt die in peace. Uh, one thing about this sword, when this sword cuts you in half, we're fixing to get to that half. When that sword cut, that cuts both ways, cuts you in half, uh, like this uh, calf that they're fixed to bring up here in a minute. Uh, it's going to be for the good, because this is where the soul is born. Amen. But thou shalt die in peace, and with the burnings of thy fathers, the former kings which were before thee, so shall they burn ador doors unto thee. They'll, this means they respected him. This means... Uh, uh, they bemoan him. They love him. It's, they're, they're crying for him when he dies. Uh, and they will lament thee, saying, O oh Lord, ah Lord, for I have pronounced the word, uh, saith the Lord. Uh, enough said there. Then Jeremiah, the prophet, spake all these words to Zedekiah, king of Judea, in Jerusalem. This is your, this is your uh, spiritual seeking part. Then uh, when the king of Babylonians army fought against Jerusalem, and we're always in that fight, that rage is always going on, and against all the cities of Judea that were left against uh, uh, Lachish and, and against Zechariah, uh, these are two cities in the region at the time, for these uh, defense cities, uh, remained of the cities of Judea. Yeah, it would probably be a good idea to look up these names and see what they mean, this Lachish and Ezekiel, and get the etymology of these uh, towns. would probably help us point us in the right direction. Etymologies of names and words are very important. And this morning I grabbed out my book that uh, has the uh, concordance in there, but I just uh, honestly just forgot uh, to use it. And these defense cities remain of the cities of Judea. This is the word that came unto Jeremiah from the Lord after the king Zedekiah had made a covenant with the people. Now an interesting thing is fixed to happen here. We're fixing to get an underlying reason why all this is taking place. And it not what you think it is. Which were at Jerusalem to proclaim liberty unto them. Liberty is being proclaimed to people that every man should let his manservant and every man his maidservant, being a Hebrew or an Hebrewess. These are people of the faith, the brethren, and seekers. These are God people that's looking for God. Go free. Uh, back then, it was common to be a slave for, uh, for uh, six or seven years. I think it was seven. And, uh, and yeah, after you did your time, they looked at it more of an apprenticeship. You would tell, like, say, if you were young and you didn't know anything and you didn't know how to to uh, fend for yourself in business, you would you would enslave yourself for seven years. I believe it was seven. And uh, after that, the good Lord told us, uh, you let those people free. Uh, but a funny thing happens to uh, the human condition and the carnal mind. We're greedy. And uh, so we stop letting these slaves in our of the brethren go free. And we just kept them in our servitude. Why? Because when we get fat and sassy and lazy, we don't see very good. Money is the ruination of our relationship with our brother. And it keeps us from treating our brother as we would be treated ourselves. This is one of the uh, golden rules 
Uh, this is a this is the ultimate expression of love. It's to treat your brother as you would treat yourself, is it not? And then so uh, these people now are uh, refusing to do that. We're fixing to read. Go free, and none should serve him of them, uh, to wit, of a Jew his brother. This is uh, these are people that are seeking God. But uh, notice there's Jew here. Not just Hebrew, but Jew, because the Jew is a likeness for uh, carnal mindedness. This is why they dejected Christ. This is why they couldn't receive Christ. And why they put him up on that cross. Because uh, the carnal mind, they were serving at that time. Uh, but don't worry, the uh, spiritual is coming around. Now when all the princes and all the people which had entered into the covenant heard that everyone should let his maidservant his manservant and everyone is a maidservant go free, that none should serve themselves and go any more. Uh, then they obeyed. Now this is key here. They were they were down with it. They were good with it. They were okay with that idea, and let them go. Oh, well, here's where uh, we run into trouble. But afterward, they turn. Now this is a backslider, and because uh, our maidservants and manservants today. Um, is not the, how it was in the old time in this carnal uh, rendition. It spiritually, we're talking about our spiritual brothers and sisters that we try to take ownership of and one-upmanship and try to be um, uh, teachers of our ill-gotten gains. And we get greedy and we start teaching our own words instead of the words of God. And next thing you know, we're driving around in a limousine like a couple of fat cats with Sun shades on, and we think we're all that in a bag of chip with our big uh, oh, uh, Cessna airplanes and our uh, jets. Our uh, these churches are all out of hand. This is this is what I'm seeing here, because they're making a slave of these people. They're all paying their ten percent tithing. They're rich, and they don't want to let them. They don't want them for them to grow into the spirit and get out of that apprenticeship. They want to keep them. In their servitude, they don't want them to see and think spiritually for themselves. They would rather keep them in the dark uh, today in the churches of today. So they'll keep serving them. They'll keep being their slaves and keeping them in those limousines and those big fancy crystal palaces of uh, their churches that they've built. And this is we're wrong for doing this. These brick and mortar churches are are very susceptible to this behavior. Uh, let me see where I was. And should not man serve this shouldn't. But afterward, they turned and caused the servants and the handmaids whom they had let uh, go free. Because we used to, there was a time we used to preach truth and return and brought them into a subjection for serving for servants and for handmaids. <clears throat> this is a bad case where spiritual people with spiritual understanding is better off uh, in the carnal by keeping uh, the people that they're supposed to be helping in the dark. Because that keeps the money coming in. That keeps the limousines rolling. That keeps the helicopters and airplanes and jets. And, you know, a lot of these preachers today, they have big, huge station, man, like like presidents. And some of them even finer than what our presidents have. Therefore, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah uh, from the Lord, uh, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, <coughs> I have made... Excuse me. I have made a covenant with your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. This was captivity. Our captivity today is spiritual. Out of the house of the bondmen, saying, At the end of seven years, there it is, seven, uh, let ye go every man his brother in Hebrew, which hath been sold unto thee sold into that apprenticeship uh, if you're still studying with somebody after seven years and you're not on your own where you can read this bible and have good understanding and be a stand on your own two feet between you and the good lord something is wrong whoever is feeding you is feeding you something to oppress you and keep you down while you hand them out that 10 percent of money every uh, month i believe it is uh, Hebrew, which had been sold unto thee, and when he hath served thee six years, no wonder I thought it was both, we got both mentioned here. 
<clears throat> thou shalt let him go free. Uh, funny that six is the number of man here. Seven is the number of spiritual completion. Let him go free from thee. But your fathers hearken not unto me. Uh, neither inclined they uh, ear. They wouldn't listen to this. They kind of wanted to keep all the juices to themselves, all the, all the good spiritual tidbits. Why? Because the preacher man that has this information and uses this information to drain people of their money, to keep people always going, oh, there's a revelation. Oh, there's a little bit here and there. Oh, there's, I better keep my money coming in because this church is teaching me. When he should unload it on them both barrels and let them have it to where they can get strong. The faster you feed a plant in your garden with water and loving care, the faster it grows. You ever seen a plant in your garden that didn't get enough water when it was young? What happens to that plant? A funny thing happens. That plant wants to survive. So its genetic makeup will change. And it'll stun itself. It'll, it'll, it'll conform. You ever seen, uh, what was them little bushes that the people in, uh, I think it's Okinawa, Japan or something, they, they trim these little trees, bonsai trees they call them. And from constantly trimming them and not letting them grow, these trees will, they will get immature. They'll get real small and tiny, but they'll still look like a big tree. Well, people are the same way. If you only feed them a little few drizzles of the Word of God and the deeper understandings of it, you can keep them small and keep them hanging around, coming back for more, but it will keep them small and compressed. And this is what God does not want us to do to our brothers. He wants us to give our brothers the best teaching, the best knowledge, the best revelation we have so they can grow and flourish. We, did, we don't need them to be a subjection to our teaching and to our, our servitude. This is why uh, you know, a couple of months back, uh, the channel got to a place where I could monetize the channel. I said, oh, how not that nice? I can make money in uh, preaching the Word of God here. And instead of reading uh, one video a day, I could do two or three, not realizing that I would be subjecting people by getting them to send me two or three bucks a month to a YouTube channel. And then I would be subjected to that money. I'd become a slave to myself. And uh, people that would be studying with me would be paying for something that should be free to flourish. And this is what uh, and I, I realized in that moment that, man, I have become the Judas priest, of which there are so many in the world today, people preaching and teaching for money. This is not the way God, uh, God, what he gave me to understand, did not come uh, from too many teachers and preachers. It came freely. And if you try to pass that on for money, uh, you better look out. You're about to wake up in the land of Judas, Iscariot. And that is a scary place, my friend. Uh, enough said on that. And ye are now turned and had done uh, right by my sight, proclaiming liberty. This is what they did at first. Every man to his neighbor, and ye had made a covenant before me in the house, which is called by my name. It was a covenant to freely let these words and understandings flow in the Spirit of God. That, but, here's another but, and it's a big one. Ye turned and polluted my name, and caused every man his servant, and every man his handmaid, whom he had set at liberty, preaching the truth and their pleasure, then returned and brought them into subjection, to be unto your servants and your handmaids. God does not want us to be in a four-wall brick-and-mortar church going every week, every week, and not learning the truth and spiritualism of God. It's only teaching uh, carnalism to keep that money coming in. Because guess what? It's easy to do to play by the rules carnally. You pay that 10%, you go to church, you hear the same old sermons, uh, which ain't really sermons at all from God's Word. It's usually quick anecdotes and funny stories and talk about all the good we're doing with our mission trips and our vans and all the things that they said, Lord, Lord, look at what all we've done in your name, Lord, all the 
all the buildings we build and the hospitals we raise and all the healings we've done in your name. And he said, what's he say? He says, go for me. I never knew you. Because the whole time we were teaching and preaching in the carnal and we wouldn't teaching and preaching in the spirit with that Holy Spirit, the Lord God, Jesus Yeshua in our hearts. Amen. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, uh, ye have not hearkened unto me. You're not listening to the spirit. You're not hearing that revelation of Jesus Christ. You're only hearing carnally. You have not hearkened unto me in proclaiming liberty, every one to his brother and every man to his neighbor. He wants everybody to be on board and freely have a, a free understanding of the deeper revelation of Jesus Christ within this word of God. He doesn't want just a few preachers at the top of a, a pyramid tower that's all the money from the bottom 